In this July release of 2025, we have some really awesome updates related to your voice assistant, dashboard updates, integrations and many more. So let's look at them. As of now, we use our voice assistant devices such that we asked it to do something for us. In this release, we have a major update for voice assistants that is, the assistant can now ask us questions and we can then respond to it. Let's take for example, if you have an automation that detects your window is open for 10 minutes and what if the assistant asks you if you want to close the window? Now, this is something that will be possible from this release wherein the assistant can ask you questions to which you can respond and depending on that, it can take some actions. Let's look at this automation that I have built here. Here I have a new action for asking questions. I have then selected my assistant here and then I have set these two possible responses that is yes or no. Now depending on the answer that I give when the question is asked, I have this condition that checks my answer and then I set the action to perform which in this case is just to reply with I did that for you. Now let's look at this in action. Should I turn on the TV? Yes. I did that for you. So with this, you can build custom conversations using the power of automations. Like you can further expand the answers to ask you further questions and build a complete conversation flow directly using automations. This is such a cool feature to make your voice assistant even more personalized and with all this running completely local. I'm really happy with this feature and I'll be making a detailed video about this. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to see it once it is out. Next, we have area cards revamped to make it compatible to sections. It's completely redesigned to make it more like a tile card. When you add the area card and then select the area you want, it automatically pulls in the entities related to the area. You can then expand the content section and you can change the display type to either set an area picture or you can set up a camera feed of the camera that is present in the area. Then you can set or change the alert classes and even sensors that you want to view in the area card. In the features section, you can further customize the look of the card and then you can add controls related to the area like I have here is the light and the switch that are added to the card and I can directly control them from the area card. You can further edit these controls and define which controls you want to be visible in the area card. This will help us to make our dashboards even more interactive and compact. Now in the April release, Home Assistant had introduced experimental area dashboards which would generate a ready to use interface based on the areas that have been configured. Now in this release, it makes use of updated area cards to make it easier to view and control some of the main devices in the room. This dashboard is an ongoing improvement that is based on users feedback and we will soon see some more changes. In the devices and services section, the integration pages now have integration sub entries. Take for example, you have OpenAI service configured and you want to add a new conversation agent. Then since the service is already configured with an API key, you can just add a new sub entry for a new conversation agent. This helps you to use the same API credentials for different agents. Currently, this feature is rolled out for these integrations here. Along with this, other integrations have also adopted the same layout. Next, we have some new integrations from our awesome Home Assistant community members like this PlayStation Network integration to track your currently playing games and display game information on your dashboard. Then we have some noteworthy improvements to the existing integrations like ESP Home now supports sub devices. Then for matter, we have dishwasher alarm and battery storage capabilities. Google Generative AI defaults to the fast Gemini 2.5 flash model and many more. Then we have the Telegram bot integration that can now be configured from the UI. 
Now I have created a detailed video of showing you how you can integrate a Telegram bot with Home Assistant which I have linked somewhere here as well as into the description below. Finally, if you are editing automation, scripts and templates in YAML code, then now you have this maximize button to open the editor window in full screen. You can then close it by clicking on this button here. Now these changes are part of the beta release and there may be changes in the final release. If you like to see such updates, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the like button for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.